Okay, this is the third take of this video, and I'm hoping it goes well this time. I kind of wrote some notes down, so it keeps me on track. So I'm going to continue on this anti-natalist thing that I was going on yesterday, and it's because of this video I saw from a channel called uh, Pseudo Intellectual. I'm not sure about that channel. I'm not sure exactly what's included and what's not included because of sponsors and things like that, or just basically like what the strategy is in, in terms of growing a fan base. So there might have been things said, and I thought about this, uh, uh, there might have been things said that were kind of uh, kind of bait, but we'll forget that for now. Um, the video is posted on Spiral Event in case you want to go see it. Um, it's the first time I've ever seen that channel, um, but uh, yeah. So the big debate is, um, and the one thing that I missed in my video yesterday was that this YouTuber was basically going on about the selfishness of not having children. And I'll go down the, the list of the main things that stuck out at me and kind of give my counter argument to it, um, as blurry as it's going to be. But I think you'll understand what I'm saying. So she essentially says it's selfish. And that's it's even in the title of her video that it's selfish not to have children. And the first one that she kind of, that, well, the first one that stuck out at me was basically that if you don't have children, you're not propagating Western civilization. And I'm not sure if she meant to say Western civilization or just civilization in general. Because if she means Western civilization, what she's actually kind of saying is that there should be some kind of militaristic intervention in Eastern countries through population boom, which is kind of a weird thing to say. Now, I'm all for Western civilization. You know, I love living in Canada. I think democracy is great. I love having uh, economic freedom. Uh, I love the government not breeding down my back. Um, and I think some Middle Eastern countries and some uh, Far East countries are kind of horrible. I mean, you think about places like China, or, um, or in the Middle East, you think about, well, you know, think of any number of them, really. Um, or even India, those places. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're getting up there. They're getting up there. They're developing. They're, they're coming up real fast. But there's still freedoms and, and equality issues, gender gaps, you know, things like that. So I understand that. But, I mean, she's kind of saying it's less morally sound for people in Eastern civilizations to have children because they would be propagating Eastern civilizations. You know, there's something blurry happening there. There's something awry um, in, in saying that that we should be ha we should be having this population race. I mean, that seems just that's absurd, and that seems kind of like, you know, kind of like breeding animals almost like animal husbandry to tell you the truth. Um, so that one's blurry. I, I don't know what she meant by that, but I think there's other ways to spread Western civilization. The internet is a big one. Uh, you know, the, the I mean, a lot of atheists in the Middle East claim that they they came to atheism or they 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 have, they have a freer they have a freer mind uh, within the uh, atheist context because of the internet the way the internet has spread information about everything available in the world all the different religions and what what everything says and they have this freedom of information and it's debatable whether information has actually changed the minds of people but i mean there have been specific accounts of people saying no the internet has actually introduced a world of information that that wasn't available to us before i mean and you can, you can tell the effects of the internet because you look at places like Iran where there's an eruption of protests recently and they, the first thing the government does, the theocratic government does, is basically shut down the internet because, well, quite frankly, the internet can actually propagate information and through information you can propagate ideas and, and, and concepts and things like that. So it doesn't necessarily depend on a population boom to actually spread Western civilization or ideas of democracy and freedom and things like that or gender equality or, or race equality things like that um, So so that there's that one um, A second reason she brought up now was basically uh, to spend people don't have kids. They're, they're so selfish They just want to spend money on themselves That could be true. That could be true And I'll start off by saying like, you know, if you want to spend money on yourself through not having kids That's your right. you you know what nobody can force you to have kids that shouldn't there should be any societal stigma for not having kids it's your body, your your right to do whatever you want. And if you end up having more money because of not having kids, then pff, spend it on yourself. Spend it on yourself. But I go further and say, like, you know, I mean, whether there's people that are selfish and just worried about spending money on themselves, I'd say that a lot of people who end up with good careers, making a lot of money and have a lot of disposable income, could spend the money on any number of things. They could spend it on, on, on charities or causes, or they could help out existing family and existing friends, and they could, you know, that, that's totally doable as well, and there's nothing wrong with that. There was absolutely nothing wrong with that, and that doesn't mean you're selfish. It just means that you're redirecting those funds to other, to other causes, to other, to other uh, things in your life, you know? Um, 
I mean, if you if you had kids, I mean, you would you could say that's selfish too because you 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 kind of limit who you're going to spend that money on, right? Uh, in a certain way, I mean, you're kind of channeling a lot of money into like just you know one or two people. <laughs> um, so like so yeah, I mean, you know, if 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 you have extra money, you, you could spend it on yourself. And the thing is. If you have extra money, like even if you don't spend it on anything that's considered charitable, a lot of that money is going to go back into the economy. I mean, unless you're like a hoarder, but I mean, you're, you're starting to really narrow things down, right? When you're talking about hoarding and all this stuff. Like, but, I, but, but I mean, even if you're not spending on, a, on, a, on, on say, ca the Cancer Society or you're not spending on, you know, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, like you're going to spend that money that goes back into the economy somehow. And, and this is money is part of a system that that isn't necessarily based on having children necessarily but it is based on on a capitalistic ideal and like if you have money to put back into a capitalistic system you're actually just greasing the wheels of the system i mean you know if you have disposable income so i mean there's also the environment but i don't like using the environment when you like if you have kids like you know there's there's notions of of the the carbon footprint and the environmental impact but uh, and, and while that is true um, I think that the, the effects of climate change can be mitigated, and I will I will use it as a reason for not having kids because I don't think the world needs more kids. Um, but I don't see the world, you know, falling off the cliff because people are going to have more kids. I think, I think according to humanprogress.org, you know, at some point that's going to balance out once developing countries start getting a little more richer and you know a little bit better with dealing with with. Uh, um, women and equality and access to different education and access to better careers things like that especially with women the population as much as it's going up now is going to go, start going back down and i think what they said was by 2100 things are going to kind of come back to the levels they are now so we'll, we'll go up a few billion and by 2100 we'll come back down to where we are now so around 7 billion or 8 billion or whatever um so i'll use the climate change thing but uh, kind of lightly um and then you know this so adoption is also an option when it comes to the whole thing about having kids and you know these kids already exist right so you might as well just give them the best lives you possibly could so adoption is an option um i don't know if you would consider that having kids but you know especially in the in the light of the whole selfishness thing like you know but i mean adoption is an option you don't you don't have to add to the population of the earth and there are kids out there that you can adopt and that also leads to the the uh, alludes to the, the the notion of immigration, right? So I mean, we can replace our population through immigration. Now, I'm with Sam Harris and those guys. Um, you know, I, I think that there should be borders that are filtered. I'm not. It shouldn't be completely open and it shouldn't be completely closed. We should have. A, a moderate level of security. We need to know who's coming into the country, but that's a, a, a bit of an aside point. Um, but we should have immigration to, you know, to fill in the gaps of population in developing countries because we might end up needing it, right? Um, we're not breeding at, at replacement levels, so we'll need people coming from somewhere. And that's a way to spread Western civilization and Western ideals as well, right? Welcoming people into your society, welcoming people into your way of life and and a lot of people want to immigrate to north america that's the thing right a lot of people want to immigrate to north america um so i don't see it as as you know oh we're just gonna just wipe ourselves out so much so that you know we're gonna end up with nothing um if that's your concern and i'll, I'll get to that eventually but uh um so yeah adoption and without careers indirectly contribute to society having kids blah blah, blah. yeah so so that i covered that and um yeah. No, I think David Benatar makes a good point when it comes to the reason people have kids. And I think while he's a bit general, it kind of digs a little bit deeper and it kind of gets under your skin. And it's, it's more of a biopsychological explanation of why people have kids. And like I said, reasons may change, differ like slightly with different people. But I think what Benatar says in Better Never To Have Been about having kids is kind of universally true. Um, and it's this. He says that basically, um, we look at kids as being kids. They're not mature. They're immature. They're, they're not biologically matured. They haven't reached adulthood. And then uh, we look at adults saying that, well, you know what? You're an adult now. You're mature. Your body can handle it. You know, you're supposed to be responsible. You're supposed to be in a position of, 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 of security and, and, and independence. Now it's your turn to have kids. 
Um, that's the way life works. And that, that has been happening for, well, thousands upon thousands upon, well, as far back as you could remember, you know, it, or think of, you know, it, 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 it's been going on. So we, in society, we generally see people as having kids when they have reached a mature age. Um, and that is what an adult is supposed to do. Um, it proves to society, it gives, off, it gives off a signal that you have accomplished what you were supposed to, there's a, a certain amount of fatalism, right? That you have accomplished what you have set out to accomplish and you have kids and you have a little version of yourself, blah, blah, blah. But what he's also saying though is that's a fallacy. That is a fallacy. A, true, a truly thoughtful person on having kids would understand that antinatalism as a philosophy states that coming into existence is harm. It is harm. I mean, people have kids and they want to take care of their kids so that they're, they, they're never hurt. They never, you know, they, they keep them safe from harm and all this stuff. They will, they will hurt. They will suffer. That's, that's life. Like, they, they will go through that. Um, and I think this is the point where I can say that whether you're selfish or not selfish or you understand this or you understand that, the philosophy, antinatalism, says it, it's a standalone philosophy. When you come into existence, you suffer, whether your parents try to protect you or don't try to protect you or whatever circumstance you come into, you will suffer. You will suffer. And I don't want to go into the whole antinatalist thing, but what I will say is the philosophy stands on its own. Um, nobody has to say or not say that somebody's going to suffer. You will. That's, that's just how it is. And if, you're, if you do not exist, you will never, ever, ever, ever experience suffering. You'll never experience uh, pleasure anyway, but there's nobody that's being deprived of pleasure because there's no one existing. So reasons this and reasons that, that's, that's sort of the philosophy. And uh, yeah, I think I'll end it, uh, end it there. Bye.